Uh, welcome. I'm here with Sue Burke, author of Semiosis. Uh, thank you for taking some time out today. I know these cons can be a little hectic, so well, thank you for talking. Any, to any me. minutes you give us, we, we really appreciate. Could you just give our, our listeners a quick background as to you know where you're from, uh, where you're schooling, what got you into writing? Um, well, I'm originally from Milwaukee. Um, and I always wanted to be a writer from the time I knew what writing was. Um, and you can thank my mother for that because she read me books all the time. Uh, I worked as a journalist for several decades, which was an excellent job because I never knew what I was going to be next, going to do next. It could be a school board budget. It could be a mass murderer because I did that too. Um, and I just got a chance to learn a lot. Um, but I was always reading science fiction and watching science fiction and wanted to move into writing that as well. So I did. Um, was it the literary science fiction that got you into it? Or was, or was it more, I know, um, Star it was Wars pushed everything. a lot of people, the space race pushed I mean, a lot of people? Well I, well, I was reading a lot. And at the time, I was a teenager. There were a lot of books, but there was some television. It was really horrible, but my mother insisted I had to watch this show. It was a new show, but it was really, really good, and I would like it. It was Star Trek. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people got into I'm, it. There. I'm an older person for people who can't see me on the radio. Do you, um, so being a Star Trek fan, there's always, you know, a difference between the Star Trek and Star Wars fans. The Star Trek liked oh, the Star more Wars science was, based was rather just than as the much fantasy. Fun. I liked it all. Okay. So you don't, you don't preference, you know, a science based more towards space fantasy. Um, you just, just love the A good the story well told. Okay. Um, so now, you uh, published your first book, Semiosis. Um, how was that process for you? What, at what time did you stop uh, being a journalist and consider yourself a novelist? Uh, there was never a stop or a start. I mean, I'd be doing journalism right now, except it's hard to get work in that field right now. I, I do write articles still. Um, I write fiction now. Um, I'm also a translator. I lived for 17 years in Spain, so I'm a certified Spanish to English translator. So I do translation as well. That's very interesting. If it's words, I'll do it. Do you translate your, your novels uh, yourself for, for your Spanish readers? No, it's, <laughs> it's really, really hard to translate into a language that is not your native language. But I do know the translator in Spain. Being uh, fluent in another language, do you find that helps you express literary like, it different? Because, uh, like you said, things translate different. Uh, you know, there's other cultures have sayings that don't really transfer over well. Do you find that being bilingual uh, helps you in, in your writing at all? It, it makes you much more attentive to language. Uh, one example is that what is beautiful writing in Spanish is very, very different from beautiful writing in English. And when you're translating, you have to bear that in mind, that this is supposed to be beautiful, but if I do it word for word, it will be horrible. I have to transfer it into beautiful English, which means rearranging a lot of things. Okay, that's very interesting. Now, for our listeners, could you just give us the, the quick, you know, couple-minute uh, elevator pitch for semiosis? Well, this book will make you afraid of your houseplants. <laughs> Um, it's a, some colonists go to another planet yes. to set up an agricultural colony. And they very quickly discover that the plants there are intelligent, some more than others, some more helpful than others on the whole. I mean, like plants here, they don't mind being eaten. I mean, an apple wants you to eat the apple. That's why it tastes good. And then you spread the seeds. And now apples have spread all around the world. We care for them as, as if they were our own children, apples could not be happier. And all they have to do is give us a little bit of food. So you're on another planet. The planets, the plants want to strike the same sort of a deal, but things go wrong. So does the uh, symbiotic relationship between humans and nature, does that really interest you? Is that, how, that what kind of drove you to write this book? Well, actually what drove me to write the book was I have a lot of houseplants and one of the house plants killed another plant. And I thought, um... That wasn't I nice. No. <laughs> and then a month later, another plant tried, attacked another plant. And I thought, this is very strange. So I started doing research. Plants are active. In fact, aggressive. We can't tell because they're slow. But plants are very aware of their environment. Um, they know what's going on. They take action as best they can, as fast as they can, which, again, we're lucky it's slow. So... These are not passive creatures. 
So my thought was, because by then I was writing science fiction, what if I could just jump them up a little bit faster so that they could be at at human speed but still do what plants do? Oh, that's very interesting. And remember, they are aggressive and they will kill each other. They will kill us if we get in the way. Well, yeah, I mean, you you don't walk in the forest and just eat any random leaf. uh, We've we've learned that through human uh, evolution that Mm -hmm. there are plants that, you know, will literally kill you if if you try to make it food. Um, How... uh, how did it feel to uh, have your work received so well that now you're you have a second novel, um, or was it? Uh, did you pitch both of them to to the uh, publisher at once, and you know, did you write the full story and they broke it down into two books? Well, How I wrote, did that work? My original plan was to write a story then that when I started writing it, I realized could not be one book because it would just be too fat. Okay. So I, I split it in two then, and wrote the first book, and brought it to an end. This is this is the standalone book. And then I wrote the second book and also as much standalone as I could make it. Um, so then when I pitched it, I said there were two books and start with one, see if it works. And, okay, and the second book is Interference? With Interference, uh, it was pitched to me in the synopsis that it was a duology. So, it, yes. you know, are you wrapping up this series and then be working on something upcoming Yeah, I'm writing, writing an unrelated novel right now. Okay. Although there could be a third book. I know what happens. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the second book does come to an end. Okay, so so in October, um, when our readers, you know, if they pick up uh, symbi- symbiosis, they can, they can get the completion, you know, this, mm-hmm. this fall, which is very interesting. Do you often do the, these, these cons, come and try to do this type of publicity with the, you only having one book out? Are, are you know, you very familiar with the, the circuit? Well, I've been coming to science fiction conventions um, since the 1990s, um, just because they're fun. Um, I really thank you for for taking some of your time out. I know you have two panels to do, and it's a busy day. Um, where can our listeners find you at if uh, if they wanted to learn more about you? Do you have a Twitter? Or... Well, they have Twitter. Their website just set up for semiosis. And it's semiosispax.com. Okay, so that's semiosispax.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you have a personal Twitter that they can converse with you? Or, it's or called, like yeah, Sue Burke Spain. Sue Burke Spain at Twitter. Mm-hmm. All right, um, well, thank you very much for your time. I'm glad that we got to uh, showcase some of your work. It sounds very interesting. We're looking forward to picking up a copy and, and writing a review on it on our site. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Well, thank you for talking to me.